2024 at the movies hasn't exactly been off to a stellar start, with only Jason Statham's The Beekeeper and the Mean Girls musical managing to become breakout successes so far. Yet there was hope that the recent commercial dry spell might be broken by Argyle, the new spy actioner from the twisted mind of Kingsman director Matthew Vaughan. But the pricey star-studded blockbuster ended up flopping in its opening weekend, grossing just $18 million domestically, in turn ensuring it hasn't got a hope in heck of turning a profit when all is said and done. So what went wrong? As the smoke clears, Apple and Universal will certainly be trying to figure that one out. Though if you ask even casual observers, the writing was very much on the wall for months that Argyle was going to tank commercially. This post-mortem will comprehensively detail everything that went wrong with the movie's release and what Hollywood desperately needs to avoid with its big upcoming tentpoles. I'm Ellie for What Culture, and let's discuss why Argyle just flopped. Number 7. The Obnoxious Marketing Campaign Marketing is everything where successful movies are concerned, and this is perhaps the area that hobbled Argyle's box office potential the most. Just a single main trailer was made for the movie and has been placed in front of pretty much every major release over the last few months. Which combined with its gratingly obnoxious style, bevy of bad CGI and trying too hard look how crazy we are tone evidently turned audiences off long before the film came out. Ultimately, the marketing made this film look like a garish, unfocused mess, and paired with the trailer's excessive presence made it something of a meme for folks to mock while online, but not to actually watch in cinemas. One of the better lessons learned since the pandemic is to give movies shorter marketing tales. And so, by sandblasting audiences with the same annoying Argyle trailer for four straight months, the studios set themselves up to fail. Number 6. The Ridiculous Budget 2023 was truly a year of reckoning for over-budgeted blockbusters, given that even some of the highest grossing tentpoles of the year didn't make enough money to actually turn a profit. And while Argyle is probably going to struggle to crack even $100 million worldwide, that damage would have been mitigated if the film had anything close to a sensible budget. Shortly before shooting started, Apple bought the rights to the film from Matthew Vaughan's production company Marv Studios for an eye-watering $200 million. Now that's a big win for Vaughan, given that the production budget was substantially lower than that figure, but Apple? Not so much. Using the typical 25 times rule for blockbuster profitability, Argyle needed to crack $500 million worldwide to be in the black. And though Apple's other recent big-budget flops, Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon were created primarily for streaming, while also being notable awards players, Argyle was clearly positioned as a major theatrical release and so invites higher expectations. And that's likely why Apple and Universal reportedly spent $80 million on marketing alone. And yet, even if it performs well on Apple TV Plus in the future, Argyle clearly won't have been worth their massive upfront investment. Number 5. The Lack of a Compelling Hook The key to selling a movie to the masses is to present them with a simple, easily understood hook. One which can be concisely conveyed across demographics, languages and cultures. But Argyle just fundamentally lacked a particularly interesting idea at its core. The meta-narrative shtick of an author getting dragged into the very world that they created has been done many times before. And in 2024, winking at the audience alone isn't enough to get butts in seats. The marketing hinged itself heavily on the mystery of who is Agent Argyle, yet ultimately failed to convince audiences why they should really care that much about this. Instead, it became something of a joke online, with many mocking the possibility of Agent Argyle actually being the protagonist Ellie's cat, Alfie, all while rumours swirled that Taylor Swift was secretly involved in the production somehow. And yet none of this sufficiently compelled folks to leave their homes and see the movie. Because at its core, is there anything fresh or interesting about this concept? Number 4. The cast aren't box office draws Though it's fair to say that movie stars don't have the same commercial sway that they once did, and moviegoers generally aren't seeing films for the lead actors alone, it certainly didn't help that Argyle's ensemble cast contains almost no consistent box office draws. Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Samuel L. Jackson, Brian Cranston and so on have been in many financially successful films. But how often was it for their presence alone? But the biggest failure here was to centre so much of the marketing campaign around Henry Cavill, 
despite him only really being in the film for a matter of minutes, and also having a pretty dismal box office record. Cavill may be enormously popular online, but as has been proven time and time again, social media clout doesn't always translate to real-world success. Ultimately, if Argyle got everything else on this list right, then the lack of commercial star wattage probably wouldn't have mattered that much. But it's nevertheless another compounding factor which harmed it out of the gate. Number 3. The PG-13 Rating Though it might sound contradictory to suggest that giving a movie a more permissive content rating could actually harm its box office, you have to consider the context within which Argyle was made, marketed, and released. With the trailers placing a frankly irritating focus on how it came from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughan, and likening it to his ultra-violent, over-the-top Kingsman movies, it was reasonable to expect a film in a similar tonal vein. Yet, Argyle was actually released with a PG-13 rating, in turn meaning it lacked the cartoonishly gory mayhem of Vaughan's Kingsman movies, no matter how desperately the trailers promised a wild and insane time. There's a fundamental disconnect between marketing the film as akin to the Kingsman franchise, only for the end result to be considerably more tame. If you promise Vaughan's usual brand of carnage, but end up serving something decidedly more sanitized, can you really be surprised when the audience rejects it? Number 2. Poor Reviews and Word of Mouth The simplest way to explain Argyle's failure is that it just wasn't very good. Critical reviews were predominantly negative, with the film currently sitting at a poor 35% on Rotten Tomatoes. And though many terrible films have been major commercial successes, in the post-pandemic landscape, audiences have generally proven themselves to be considerably pickier about what they watch theatrically. And as a result, it's likely that many checked the tomato meter, saw the NAF reviews, and decided to watch Argyle on Apple TV Plus instead in about 45 days or so. And on top of that, even those who did watch the movie weren't terribly impressed. The brutal C plus cinema score, which is Vaughan's lowest to date, indicates it simply didn't deliver the film audiences were expecting. Likely exacerbated by the bait and switch marketing, the numerous prominently promoted actors, namely Cavill, appearing for just a few brief scenes. Number 1. Matthew Vaughan's Weakened Brand Matthew Vaughan may not be a huge name in Hollywood, but he has nevertheless carved out a solid niche for himself as the Kingsman guy, even accepting that the second and third Kingsman films were wildly mixed bags, to say the least. The marketing leveraged itself heavily on Vaughan's prior pedigree, but in 2024, almost an entire decade removed from the original Kingsman's release, and in turn his last well-received film, it's fair to say that his name just doesn't carry the same pull anymore. The From the Twisted Mind tagline was wildly joked about on social media, with many evidently finding it excessively hubristic for a filmmaker who has been on the critical skid for years to be pushed as a major reason to watch the movie. And so, this confluence of factors ensured that Argyle was always destined to tank at the box office. It'll certainly be interesting to see how this flop affects both Apple's blockbuster release strategy moving forward, but also Vaughn's career, given that he's currently working on a new Kingsman and kick-ass movie. But as ever, time will tell.